Bamboo Labs needs your help. They don't necessarily want your help, but trust me, they need it and they need you to give it to them. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and this is the Bamboo Lab Carbon X1. Now chances are you've already heard about this 3D printer because Bamboo Lab is marketing it very aggressively. But more than that, they have made a 3D printer worth talking about. I really don't want to repeat what other people have said, so let me just say this. Everything you've heard is true. Now, some of the things that I've heard is that it's not perfect, but it's very, very good and definitely worth the money. And I agree with that statement. But I've talked in the past about what a perfect 3D printer would be. And no, this is not a free Star Trek replicator in every house. So, of course, it's not perfect. But I've also talked in the past about how for the price can affect the expectations of a 3D printer. But in the past, I was talking about a very, very cheap 3D printer. This 3D printer at just a little over a thousand dollars is the opposite. It raises your expectations and still somehow blows the roof off of them. Now, one thing that I don't think people are talking quite enough about is the impact of the way this machine measures filament before it starts a print. Yes, people are talking about the fact that it will do a test print and then it will go over it with LiDAR and then it will print with the settings that it figures out from that. But this is amazing. I have for years lamented the fact that the most difficult thing to do on a home 3D printer is print your standard interconnecting building blocks. These simple sort of bricks that we see everywhere. If you try to 3D print these, sometimes, usually, it doesn't work. And even if you do get it to work, you fiddle with your 3D printer and get the calibration just right, you're only doing that for this roll of filament that you're testing through the prints. And the moment that you get another roll of filament, maybe filament from a different manufacturer, or even just a different color, or heaven forbid you should go crazy and try putting some silk in there, like this rainbow silk from my friends at Yosu. Silk PLA likes to swell just a little bit, which means that all of your accuracy measurements are just thrown out the window, and all of a sudden your bricks just don't fit whatsoever. And forget about it, I'm not even going to try to recalibrate it again. I'm just going to invent an entirely different brick that doesn't need to be as accurate. Printer block. Now, in the past, I have asked this of every 3D printer manufacturer that I could get a minute of their time. I've said, please, can we find a way to measure the filament as it's coming in and adjust our feed rate? Well, the Bamboo Lab found a solution and did it in a way that I wouldn't have ever thought of. They print four lines, and each one of these lines is printed at a different flow rate, just a slightly more or less. And then it scans it with a LiDAR scanner, which, <laughs> wow. Then it looks at those different lines and says, that's the one that's the most accurate, so that's the feed rate that we're going to use. And it adjusts the entire print to print in that feed rate. That means that this can print interlocking building blocks. That means that it can print interlocking building blocks in different filaments without needing to recalibrate. That means that it can print interlocking building block studs. These little ones that have to be perfect on all sides, all the way around, it can actually do them. And it even has another side to it. I'm sorry, I'm gushing on this and I absolutely love it because this measurement system means that your prints come out watertight. You can actually hold water in them. With FDM prints, oftentimes there's micro gaps between the layers. And even if it's just in one spot, it's enough that water can get through and seep out and leak these prints on the bamboo lab, regardless of the filament you throw in it, will be watertight. And you can actually use them for water-based projects. This is amazing. I so, oh, honestly, 
I've heard this said before, and, and I agree. Bamboo Labs is just doing everything right. So why do I say that Bamboo Labs needs our help? Well, one of the things that they did right was they used Prusa Slicer as a basis for their slicer. Now, that's not right or wrong, but somebody pointed out to them, hey, that slicer has a license on it, and that license says that if you use that code, you also need to share it. And they did. We didn't have to fight them big on it. They were like, oh, ah, okay, and they shared it. So you can get the code for the Bamboo Lab Slicer on GitHub now. It's out there for anybody to get. When MakerBot came onto the market, they were big into open source. They open sourced their designs, they open sourced their software, and their designs were kind of rough, and their software was really rough. But we, the community, helped them. People who had the knowledge of engineering would look at their designs and improve them and send those designs back to MakerBot and MakerBot would incorporate those into the next level. And people who knew software would build the software and make it better and make it easier and send it back to MakerBot. MakerBot had their own research and development crew, but it was very small. Their research and development crew really was all of us. That's why in the early days of MakerBot, everybody was MakerBot. My first blog was Joe's MakerBot. So many people incorporated MakerBot into their online identity because we were MakerBot until they went closed source. But that's a story for another time. Now Bamboo Labs has gone open source just a little bit. They've dipped their toes in the open source water. And you know what they're going to do? they're gonna pull it right back out because open source doesn't make sense from a business perspective. From a business perspective, you want to keep your advantage. And if your advantage is that you have a better piece of software or a better piece of hardware than other people, you don't share that with them. You keep that stuff to yourself. And so I guarantee you, Bamboo Labs right now is trying to rewrite a slicer from scratch that they do not have to share with everybody else to maintain their advantage. And that would be a tragedy. But what if instead this happened, that we fulfilled the promise of open source for them, that we took their slicer, and their slicer isn't perfect, it's good, but there are things about it that I looked at and went, man, you know, that could be a little bit better. And what if we fixed it? What if we took new features that, you know, maybe people have played with in other slicers and we incorporated it into their slicer and then handed it back to them and said, hey, you don't need to build a new one. Here's some new features for you. Here's some things that would take you time and money to do. Don't even worry about it. We're with you. Here have these. All of a sudden, it becomes more profitable for them to say, well, let's just piggyback on the community and maybe we can pull them into the open source a little bit more. Maybe we can convince them to open source their hardware. Sure, right now it's not open source. And sure, from a business perspective, that seems very scary. But maybe we can show them the example of others in the past. Yes, Prusa has had so many copycats, people who took their designs and made cheaper versions. And yet, people are still buying Prusas because, well, if you want a good printer, you go to Prusa where they don't cut corners. And we can say, listen, guys, yes, somebody may come out with a cheaper Bamboo Lab copy, but the fact of the matter is that people will still be buying the good stuff because you've got the good stuff. And as long as they continue to work and innovate, and quite frankly, I don't see them not doing that, they can and will maintain advantage while at the same time maintaining open source. It's been done in the past. It can be done again. But if we don't reach out, anybody who has the aptitude for programming should try to help Bamboo Lab. I know, I know it can be hard to wrap your head around that, to say, well, why would I want... They're doing fine on their own, but they're going to do fine on their own. And, and I'll tell you the honest truth. If they go closed source, if they pull back and come up with their own slicer that they don't have to share with anybody. And if we lose them from an open source perspective, 
I am still probably gonna be buying another Bamboo Lab when I need to expand out my 3D printing capability because this machine is just so much wow. I'm telling you right now, this machine is my new main for the foreseeable future. Now you might notice that this is not the AMS version of this printer. I am just reviewing the single color version of this printer and I am still giving it glowing reviews. But I do wonder how my opinion might be affected by being able to print in multicolor prints. Well, we're gonna find out. <sighs> and I look forward to telling you about that in the future. While you're checking out this cool thing, posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and I'll see you next time.